welcome to Squib Around the CFL Episode 2. I'm your host, Riley Pollock. And after a great first episode with the BC Lions Den podcast, I head east to Edmonton to talk with Andrew Hoskins of the Turf District podcast. The last time the CFL went in 2019, Edmonton went 8-10 and and finished second last in the West Division. They fell to Hamilton in the East semifinal after crossing over. Quarterback Trevor Harris was the team's MOP nominee. He finished 2019 second in the CFL in pass yards. Despite starting just 13 games, he threw for 16 touchdowns and six interceptions. Here to talk more about the season ahead for the Eskimos and more, Andrew Hoskins from the Turf District Podcast. Andrew, welcome to the show. Thanks a lot for coming on. Thanks so much for having me on, Riley. I appreciate it. No problem. It's great to hear from you. I follow along closely to the podcast, and it's uh, it's nice for me to be able to do this because the podcast I run is a lot of football, but with no CFL last year, it was uh, it was tough to get a whole lot of it on. So it was a lot of NFL talk, but I'm a CFL diehard at heart, so it's it's good to finally be able to maybe have a little bit of hope going into this season, although some announcements this week and some reportings might not give me that much hope. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's, I, I, I get where you're coming from. Yeah, trying, let's, to run a, trying to run a sports podcast when there's a lack of sports is definitely not the easiest thing in the world, for sure. Yeah, let's start there, I guess. Uh, Arash Madani has reported that the league will announce a delaying of the season on April 19th. I kind of felt that that was going to happen for a while. I think a lot of people have that we weren't going to get the start right away. But uh, where are you on the start of the season, and what do you think we're going to see from the CFL this year in terms of uh, scheduling and when they start? Yeah, I think there was some hope. There was some hope early on that things may get rolling a little uh, more, you know, closer to on time. Uh, But I can't say that I'm shocked if it doesn't, (laughs) because uh, we're at a different level, right? Different level of people getting the vaccine. We're at a different level of now we're a lot of places are going through a third wave of the virus. And those are things that are completely out of the CFL's control. It gets out of everybody's control and uh, other than, you know, following the rules, right? So it's, um, I guess we all kind of went back and thought, well, you know, we're, we're hopeful. We're, we thought we were kind of going to get through things and vaccines would roll out and, okay, here we go. Maybe they'll play a few games without any fans in the stand. But it's kind of looking like that's not really going to be a possibility. And so there was always that backup plan of, okay, well, maybe we have to hold off and maybe we're looking more towards September. Uh, the one thing that I, I don't want to hear, I guess, on April 19th is, well, we're going to delay it, and, and I guess, well, we're not really sure. Like, I, I want to hear, okay, we're going to delay it. We have the plan in place. This is where what our plan is based on the vaccines that are coming out and, and with what we now know of the virus. And our plan is to, you know, get people here in early August and hopefully start in by Labor Day. And I, I'm, I would be totally accepting of that, uh, even just based on our own safety as fans on how are we going to be able to be as much in the stadiums as we possibly can and just keep it safe for everybody involved. Yeah, I agree 100%. I, I've kind of been on board with the Labor Day start since we've kind of felt like we weren't going to have a full season. But yeah, it's just say something from the CFL, Randy Ambrosi head office. It's just, it seems like it's a lot of wait and see and unclarity for the fans, the players, everyone so yeah just say something somewhat definitive is all that i can hope that the cfl does and i think we'd all love that the one thing that we have to be careful of though is that it, it, when it's changing every week you, you re, it's so hard to be definitive you know what i mean like i, yeah. I can give them a, a bit of a pass i know even just in my own job it's like one week we're allowed to do this and the next week you're not yeah. <laughs> so uh, or, or you make plans thinking, okay, by this point we should be able to do this, and then you realize, mm, maybe not so much. <laughs> so, yeah, that's... Um, so I think there has to be a little bit of, I agree with you that what I'd like to hear is, this is what our plan is. Now, that plan can still change, because the world is in a 
state of constant change at this particular moment. But this is our plan. This is our goal. And the one thing I will give a lot of credit to is the fact that they are talking there will be football at some point. I just don't know when that point is going to be because we got to see what is going on in the world. Yeah, that's fair. Um all right, let's 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 move on to a little bit more Eskimo-related topics. There's a, still a, a big one that's non-football related around... Oh, sorry, I said Eskimo. Edmonton-related... <laughs> we're going to that topic now. Uh, Edmonton Football Club-related topic says uh, they're still looking for a new name there. They're, it's still going through the process. There's been kind of a fan vote on names. What? Where are we with the new name, and what's your favorite going into the season? Uh, well, my uh, I've kind of floated a bit. I've got to be honest uh, between a couple of names, but uh, I, I always liked the the Elks, but I liked it with the S on the end. Uh, I'm mm-hmm. fine if whatever if they just go Elk, then okay, great. Um, but uh, yeah, I kind of floated between that one, and, and for a while there, I was hearing uh, Golden Eagles, which I kind of liked just because it was a little more of a reflection back to the Golden Bears, which is where the team got their colors from, right? So Mm -hmm. I thought that was kind of a neat thing. But if they end up with elk, the one thing for sure is that we're all ready to buy our antlers and stand the stands and, you know, bring loud elk calls and have lots of fun with that. So uh, I have a feeling that's kind of where it's going to land. As far as them announcing it, I think waiting is not a bad thing. Um, I, I know a lot of people don't like that. <laughs> they want it to be, give me my answer and let's go. Um, but the having having um, being part of a podcast that just finished rebranding, um, it's a nightmare. <laughs> and that's a whole corporation, and we're just a podcast, right? Mm-hmm. So um, I think what you want to do is is you want to announce it when it's close to what would have been or. I'm saying would have been now, what would be training camp. Uh, you want to announce it when it feels like football, when there's spring in the air, when there's the grass is starting to turn green. Um, you kind of feel like, okay, now is the time to get excited about these things. And you want to announce, or when you announce, you want to make sure that you have a whole bunch of stuff to back it up. So what I, I, I'm, I'm kind of happy about is I want to hear, you know, so this is our name. Our name is now the Elk, and here are your available jerseys and hoodies and hats. Let's jump behind this uh, because I'm one of those people that is like, yeah, okay, I have all my money waiting to give to you once I know what that is, right? So yeah. they what they don't want to do is they don't want to say, yeah, our name is the Elk, and you can get your stuff to support the team in a couple of months. <laughs> like you want to mm-hmm. actually have it ready to rock right yeah so, that's so super um, fun. yeah exactly <laughs> so i i feel like we'll probably hear within the next two months it would be my guess uh but then they'll have the proper backing and be able to announce it properly i like that answer i'm i'm okay with that <laughs> i'm, I'm excited for a big rollout and i think elk is yeah. my favorite team too team name Good. Okay. Well, you can say it's your favorite team, too. I wouldn't be upset about that. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> uh, anyone who listens to this regularly knows where my allegiance lies. <laughs> yeah, that's why I was trying to sway you. It's fine. It's okay. Um, let's move to the on-field product, or what should be the on-field product. Um, Eskimos were pretty busy in free agency this season. What are your thoughts on some of the work that they did during free agency? Well, you know what? They did have to make some moves. Some moves were necessary, um, and especially with the adjustment to the salary cap, uh, it really did, you know, mean some dollars needed to go in other places. I know when you go back to 2018, 2019, one of the biggest things uh, with the Edmonton football team was that secondary was okay, but it was never great. And we had this amazing defensive line. (laughs) Yeah, and then we had the secondary that was a little hit and miss, and uh, I think the you know Brock Sunderland went out and said, "Okay, we're going to we're going to upgrade our secondary. To do that, we're going to have to take some money from our defensive line, maybe a little bit from our offensive line, and find guys that'll that will 
properly fill some of those holes but not cost us as much so that we can take some of those dollars into the secondary, which was, again, a glaring kind of thing that needed to be fixed. And I think he did that. I think he did a great job of that. When you when you add in uh, Rose coming in, uh, Grimes coming back, uh, Mincy uh, re-signing, uh, they really did put some effort into that secondary, which makes me very happy. And although it's, it's hard to see guys like Almondo Sewell not come back here, uh, when you've got guys like Jake Ceresna, um and, of course, you know, another leader in Kwaku here already, like, they're, they're ready to take that next step and this is really going to push them into that so I'm, I'm quite happy with how those changes happened on the defense of course on the offensive side of the ball uh trevor resigns or uh, restructures his contract which is fantastic uh so and because of that you see things like we having the return of darrell walker and greg ellinson be able to come back into the same unit to me, that's exciting, um, and uh, and and now they add in James Wilder Jr., who has had a couple of really great years. Has had a couple that were kind of in the middle. I'm curious to see what happens when he's standing behind a little bit of a better offensive line, uh, and with a head coach that knows to kind of balance between that run pass game. So uh, it could be very interesting to see when we get on the field how that balance works for them. And uh, but I, I think it was all good moves to kind of keep everything good in every spot and increases in the places where we needed to increase. Yeah, for sure. I I really like this Edmonton team on paper, and I was talking with Brian of BC Lines then last week, and he picked Edmonton to represent the West in the Grey Cup in my way too early predictions, just based on paper this year. Do you think that they have improved that much, that they could be competing up around the top of the West this year? Well, I think they could absolutely challenge for the top. Um, The one thing that I think that I would need to see more of. And, and this is why this is why I'm sad that we're not having training camp right away. It's one of my favorite times of the year is to go in and watch how these guys gel. And it's great that we brought all these guys in. Can they work in the system underneath that coach? And that's the part that we don't really know yet because other than AJ Gas, like our whole coaching staff is new as well. <laughs> the uh, you know from the last yeah. time we hit the field. So, so on paper, if you're going just by balance and the way that they could attack offensively and prevent defensively, do I think that they have a shot to be in the upper side of the the West Division? Absolutely, I do. Um, I'm curious though once I once I see if where the gelling is at or, or kind of how they work together would then make me think, okay, is this one that I think they are a contender right away, or do they need a little bit more time to kind of learn how that works together, where they challenge near the top this year, and then next year you kind of really put it all together under in, in new systems, right? Yeah, for sure. And let's touch a little bit more on that uh, bit of a coaching carousel for Edmonton, as Scott Milanovic was the head coach going into last season, and then obviously the season didn't happen. And he left, and now Jamie Elizondo is the new head coach, and he's worked with Trevor Harris before. What are your thoughts on this coaching carousel, and how do you feel about him coming into the mix now? Well, you know, it's always tough with coaching. Um, it, it, it's always difficult to try and make a specific plan under each each spot. Um, I was really happy when we were able to get Scott Milanovic. I thought that was kind of a a coup kind of bringing uh, an NFL coach back into the CFL to kind of run the show. Um, but at the time, I, I think Jamie Elizondo was very high on that list and couldn't get permission to leave the XFL at the time. So it, um, in, the, in the long run, I guess it just kind of worked out uh, because when, you know, all of a sudden Milanovic has another in spot to go back down south he does and now Jamie Elizondo is free and, and luckily a lot of these people that are already on staff are people that Elizondo's already worked with because he worked with them when he was with Milanovic so um, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how that's played out and I know Trevor um, had one of his best years when he played with um, Elizondo so 
So I'm excited to see how that plays out on the field, and, and I'm thinking that at least, if nothing else, they're getting to know each other really well over Zoom over the last few months. Yeah, for sure. I, I like the hiring a lot. I I had heard that he was up high on the list the first time around, and so I maybe they got their guy from the first time yeah. that they just couldn't they couldn't have before. So I'm interested to see. I think it's a great pickup, and he's worked well with a few players on that team before. So it will be interesting course, yeah. to see. Um, I agree. Before we finish up, I got a few more for you here. I'd like to hear your thoughts on the big topic in the CFL this off season, and that's the possible CFL XFL merger. How likely do you feel it is, and where are you on a full merger, partial merger? What's what's your thoughts on the whole thing going on right now? Well, you know what? I think uh, I think like a lot of fans, um, I, I kind of flip flop day to day. <laughs> um, <laughs> the one thing is that that I I guess the the base level for me is that I I want to have football at Commonwealth Stadium, so I want to be able to go and watch my team play and whatever they're, you know, as long as they're playing some type of, of football rules, I'm likely going to be there and watching it. The, I, of course, would prefer the three-down game because that's the game that I've watched uh, my entire life and the game that I really love. So um, i excited about the possibility of going to a, a four-down type league. Not, not really. Does it mean I'm not going to go? Probably not. <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll still be there. So I, I don't know. I think that the the biggest thing that I would like to see is some type of working together for for PR and and trying to grow the games. Um, and and if there is going to be a merger of some kind, I would really like for them to stand out and be different. Keep the three down ball right. It doesn't need to be four down. Um, and I think that's the thing that I'm. I'm kind of hanging on to is that, okay, let's, if we're going to combine the, the games, great. Then, you know, let's, let's take on the, the parts that I really like to call the XFL, the things like the converts where you could have a three point convert. Hell, I'd be all over that. Um, but I, I don't want it to be, I don't want to be rushed into, and I don't want it to be something that they're just, okay, well now we're taking all of the tradition and, and, um, longevity of the CFL and just going, yeah, well, we need it to be this now. Because if we turn into trying to be an NFL light, lots of t- times we've seen that that's just never gone well. So let's be proud of who we are. Let's let's be the Canadian game and, and let's show people how exciting that game can be with a lot of fun players. That's And on top of that, keep the access because that's one of the biggest things about the CFL, right, is – that yeah. player access, that player um, involvement, community involvement, that kind of stuff. It, like the CFL does that better than any other league, and it's one of the reasons that it's so endearing, and one of the reasons why myself and a guy from Calgary and a guy from Saskatchewan and, and a guy from Ottawa can sit down at the table at the Grey Cup and all just enjoy the game together because it, it really does have that family feel and, and part of that is that the players are part of it. So I hope whatever they come to that that's, those parts are held together and, and I think that would be a, a good thing for the league. Very well said. I appreciate that opinion on it. It's uh, So many people are either so hard one way or the other. I like that... Uh, You'd be accepting of a little bit of change and still hope that we can keep the Canadian game intact. So uh, that, that's a nice, refreshing opinion, I think. Oh, thanks. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it sounds like I'm fence-sitting. I'm, I'm, I'm not. I really do want the Canadian game to be there, but I just want to make sure that when it comes across that, hey, you know, um, I, I cheer for the, the, the logo on the front of the jersey. And yeah. uh, whatever they're playing... I like those guys. I want to sit down and watch those guys play and, and cheer for it. So. Yeah, I agree 100%. Um, all right, what? let's just kind of maybe dive into the West Division quickly here before I let you go. I feel like this could be a year where this Stamps team isn't a top two, top three team. I think there's a lot of good teams, and it kind of feels like Calgary lost a lot of players 
How do you kind of see on paper, again, we haven't seen it play out before, and Calgary always seems to find guys and have them fill spots and become first in the West no matter what. But uh, how do you kind of see this West division shaking out this year? Is I think that it's Edmonton, Saskatchewan, Winnipeg could be the big three this year. Wow. All right. Well, I, I'm not going to. Uh, I'm not going to argue your point uh, of, of Edmonton, Saskatchewan, Winnipeg. Um, I think Saskatchewan made some. Well, honestly, one of the biggest things that they did is bringing in Coach Moss, and his offensive brain is is amazing. Um, and if those guys can kind of jump on board with that, I think it'll be interesting. Where I think Saskatchewan might have a little more difficulty is on the defensive side of the ball. They did lose quite a bit on the defensive side, so. Um, Calgary, I, I will. I just can't write them off because I've done that so many times. This is what you even said, right? Yeah. How many years have I said, "Oh, this is the year"? They're finally going to go back a bit, and they're going to have to understand what the rest of us go through. And then they plug in some no name, and he lights up the league. So I, I don't. I never count Calgary out. Um, I, I and I just. I, I guess I've now just you know, succumbed to the fact that uh, I have to put them in the top three somehow. <laughs> so um, I think if I was looking straight on paper across the West, if Winnipeg to me looks like they should have enough to finish first still. And the reason for that is that they've had the least amount of change. So mm-hmm. you really don't have, um, you know, they have basically the same team, um, they have basic, They have the same coaching staff other than the change from La Police uh, to, oh my good lord, my brain just shut off, whatever, what is his name? Brock. <laughs> no. Oh my goodness, it totally shut off. Um, <laughs> the guy that kept getting hurt, that quarterback <laughs> comes in, he's going to, uh, he, he's been trained through the system, so I don't think it's going to be a huge change there, so... They have the most consistency, and if one thing that we have learned in the CFL over years and years and years is consistency pays off, right? It always does. So yeah. um, I think that they will they will do very well. We've already talked about Edmonton, and I can, again, it, it, it's that one's a quite a, a variable one. Uh, I could see them finishing anywhere from second through fourth. Like, I, it really just depends on how they gel and how they can work together. Um, Saskatchewan, I would put them in that same spot, anywhere kind of second through fourth, because I don't know what that defense is going to do. Um, they lost some pretty big pieces. They put some, they brought some pieces back, for sure. Um, but are they of the same quality as the pieces that left? Not really. Um, so uh, their offense is probably going to be dynamite. I just don't know what their defense is going to look like. Um, BC has definitely plugged some holes and I still see them finishing somewhere like third to fifth. Um, they, we, and the reason I say third to fifth is because they did make some upgrades and their offensive line did get better in 2019. What killed them was the first half of the season when their offensive line was garbage. Yeah. And they just, <laughs> Mike Riley, you know, was signing out um, uh, casts every week because he's getting nailed all the time. Um, But the second half of that season, they started to come together. And if they really start to come together and give Mike Riley time, that they they have an opportunity to be a lot better team offensively. And their defense is kind of middle of the road. So, um, so again, they could kind of float there, but, um, but I still see them on the lower half, I think yet until they have that time to grow and have that consistency. Cause again, now they've gone through a, a full coaching change as well. So, so that's kind of where I see where things are lying out Calgary. I mean, like I said, I'll put it anywhere from like, well, probably first because that, that's what they, do all the time. My PTSD <laughs> says it's going to be first, um, maybe, you know, first to fourth. Um, but I, I see Winnipeg uh, on the higher end. I see Edmonton in that little higher middle. Um, I see Saskatchewan and Calgary kind of right in the middle there, and BC probably in the last two, depending on on how well they they come together on the other coaching staff. Awesome, and I think Buck Pierce is what we were looking for. 
That's the one. <laughs> hey, I knew there was a B. I just yep. could not remember his name. <laughs> sometimes uh, when you, you get to my age and you're in the middle of uh, doing six things at once, you don't always remember. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, <laughs> one final one before we go here. I'm going to get everyone to do it as I travel across Canada interviewing someone from each CFL team, and I need a way too early Grey Cup prediction and who the winner of the game is going to be. Oh, my goodness. All right. Well, um, okay, then I, I'm going to say that the Grey Cup is a rematch of the, of the 2019 Grey Cup, that it's Winnipeg and Hamilton, but I think Hamilton takes it down. That team, they brought everybody back and got better. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I, I, I can see that that train is going to be rolling as they get into Hamilton this year. So um, I, 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 barring some catastrophic injuries, I, I'm going to call Hamilton as my way too early pick. Awesome. Well, that's uh, all I got for you today. Thank you so much for hopping on. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, man. I really appreciate it. No problem. We'll talk soon. There you go. That was Andrew Hoskins of the Turf District podcast covering all things Edmonton Football Club. Make sure to check it out as the crew at Turf District do an unbelievable job covering the team and our league. Well, that will do it for episode two of Squib Around the CFL. Next week, we will chat with my friend Matt Rose, who covers the Calgary Stampeders for Sportsnet 960, the fan. Don't forget to subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and follow us on all the social medias at Squid Kick Radio. I'll talk to you next week for Episode 3. I got you stuck off the rail, the, the realness. Think not, this, 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 this shit's too hot. Walking on the surface of the sun, to the sun, to the sun.